do you have a scenario you always run through your head just for fun, to the point that you have it planned out to perfection? Everyone has one. What they'd do if they won the lottery. The perfect bank robbery. Zombie survival plans. Well, mine was always the classic deal with the devil. I wasn't obsessed per se. It just started off when I was bored at work and I daydreamed about what I'd wished for if given the chance. Except, it wouldn't be given away. With him, there's always a catch. The classic monkey's poor wish. At least, that's how it's always portrayed. I figured that behind every work of fiction, there's always some real life influence. Vampires came from Vlad the Impaler. Unicorns came from travelers seeing an obscure deer from an odd angle. So, with many similar depictions of the devil, there had to be a real life example as reference. At first, I had a simple wish. I wish I was rich. But, we've all seen the shows where this goes horribly wrong. So, that got me thinking. How can I make the perfect wish? Well, that wish doesn't secure me physically, so the phrasing evolved to I wish I was rich, and that I can't be harmed physically because of it. That's one stipulation down. But what else could go wrong, I thought. And the more I thought, the more I realised. A lot. Eventually, I settled on this monster of a wish. I wish I was financially rich with relevant current money. Money which cannot be stolen and my loved ones and myself cannot be harmed because of it, during which the devil or any of his associates can't interfere with my life or the life of my loved ones to detriment the wish. In doing so, we forfeit an extra wish to rectify the situation. If legality issues are caused by the wish's wealth, the devil promises to represent me legally to continue the lifespan of the wish. If I decide the wish is not satisfactory, I can recall back to the point in which the deal is made for free. That last bit was a stroke of genius on my part. A huge reset switch, in case everything went sour. It was during one of my daydreams when I was called into my manager's office. In the meeting room was sat a lot of the company's partners, something which did not happen every day which signified the severity of the situation. They'd be calling various people from the office in periodically through the week, yet no one knew why. What happened next was the most tense meeting of my life. They went through many documents, listed out massive company losses and read out various co-workers testimonies all pointing at a few accounting mistakes I'd made which snowballed into a huge blunder. I tried to answer everything the best I could, about how I didn't know and how it was a small oversight. But that was all the confession they needed and they let me go. With such a huge mark on my name, word spread, and I was unhirable in my field pretty much throughout my entire region of the country. Even other jobs which weren't 100% related, I'd mysteriously get let down after a background check. My savings weren't in the best of shape when I had a job, and it was looking like I wouldn't last long without a new source of income. This is when I was driven to the most desperate of measures. On top of the countless hours I spent scouring the web for a job, I also spent some of my free time as embarrassing as it is to admit, looking for ways to contact the devil. With all the time I put into my plan, it became a possible escape route in the back of my head. That, or the delusional surfaced after the mental breakdowns became more frequent. This was as hard as you might expect, as a lot of the posts I found were edgy teens searching the same query, all role players acting like they succeeded and were trying to sell the answer, all playing out like they did succeed and were now doing an AMA while possessed. I was getting nowhere, fast, on both fronts. 
Desperate times called for desperate measures, and I was at rock bottom. I was applying for jobs as low as being a cleaner, a far fall from grace for me, and I was squirting pentagrams of my carpet with ketchup and screaming chants in broken dead languages. I'll never know which one it was, but to my shock and surprise, one of them worked. The visage that appeared in front of me was oddly cliché. He looked rather sharp in the classy suit he was in, and from my time mixing with the upper crust, I knew a good suit when I saw one. This suit was perfect. His figure was the ideal body type for a trustworthy CEO, above six foot too. I grasped his outstretched hand, and he gave a firm and confident handshake. I tried to keep composed, however, his aura made me wobbly and lose all demeanour of confidence. He spoke first and smoothly. So, what is your wish? Well, it sounded like everything I thought about the devil was true. But I sneered in the back of my head as I thought, if he was expecting an easy time, he came to the wrong person. Without hesitation, I started to spout the rehearsed plan I had been thinking of for the better part of a few years. I went over all the clauses, ensuring my total safety, and even started to ad-lib extra parts on the fly. I was on a roll. When I finished, we were left in silence. I stared at him, now with a slight twinge on my lips hinting at a suppressed smirk, though I forced myself to not smile, a thin veil and an attempt of a poker face. I expected him to be shocked, or at the very least mildly bothered, but he just smiled and said, It is done. I opened my eyes in shock, taken back by his lack of reaction, however soon he was gone and I was again alone in my apartment. I pulled up my phone and opened my banking app. What was only minutes ago in a dismal state was now looking more like a phone number. I wasn't just rich, I was insanely rich. I started to hyperventilate in excitement. After a brief moment of exasperation, I got to living my life to the fullest, with no worries, just fun. Immediately, I started renting out the nicest apartment in the middle of the city. Rather than decorating it myself, I just asked them to keep the display decor. The extra amount I offered more than satisfied their protests. I started spending thousands a day. I only let the nicest of foods touch my palate. I parted with the most important people I could get in contact with, each of them enthralled by my fast pace of life. Every day was an adventure around the world. I could be wherever I wanted to be, whenever. Believe it or not, this was me starting slow. Soon I was supplemented on some fine ingredients that had me wired on a near 24 hour basis. I could not be slowed down. Because the money could not be stolen, I never had to have any sort of guard, something that plagues a lot of people with wealth. In theory, I could withdraw all of it in a lump sum and leave it unattended in the middle of the city, and a twisted divine intervention would stop a child from stealing a penny of it. Years went by like this, the greatest years anyone could live. What I accomplished in a year was something any normal person would dream of doing in many lifetimes. I swam in the most exotic of places with the most beautiful of people. I shared feasts with great leaders of the world. If it was possible and sounded fun, I had done it. In my more crazier years, I even invented new ways to have fun. Go-karting with paintball guns? 
that was a weekly thing for me. Drug magicians? Admittedly, one of my more coke fueled ideas. But it happened. I even started an underground betting circle based around horse racing. But the horses were on fire. So many horses died. Damn, that was fun. Looking back, I'm surprised an idea didn't backfire sooner. But as you can imagine, when you push the limits on what's possible, one of them did. What's upsetting was how inane of an idea the one that blew up in my face was. It started with me offering money to one guy in one of my many friend groups to down a drink. A simple concept, done by a lot of people in their party years. Well, this evolved. Later, I told him I'd give him money to try walk on his hands. He couldn't. But man, it was funny watching him try. While walking to the next nightclub, I saw a stop sign. All I did was offer to pay him an obscene amount to run headfirst into the sign. Well, he really wanted the money. So he made it convincing. He ran headfirst, full speed, into the red. With a loud thunk, he dropped to the floor. We were howling, easily up there in the funniest things I'd ever witnessed. Soon we were around him, shaking him awake, all through tears of laughter. Then this turned to jostling, which became violent slapping. Nothing. No amount of physical abuse was getting him up. We eventually called an ambulance, who pronounced him dead on arrival. Broke his neck on impact, apparently. Died instantly. The case started as involuntary manslaughter. The whole group were getting prosecuted. However, they all soon turned on me, testifying against me, and pinning it all on me. It turned from a group of involuntary manslaughter to just me seeing a heavy sentence of second degree murder. I wasn't having it, so I called for help. I scraped pentagrams around my cell, I chanted whatever vaguely devilish things I could think of, and called upon him to return, so I could ream his ass. Midway through a guard screaming at me to shut up, he froze. And in that still time, the devil himself showed up outside my cage. I jostled him, accusing him of interfering. I told him how I saw it, that it was too convenient that he died so easily, that he obviously had a hand in this whole ordeal and that it was against the contract for him to do so. He simply responded that he was innocent, how I was simply unlucky. I stopped after that and contemplated my options. I ran through my wish over and over in my head. No matter how much I dragged my brain through, I always remembered every part of my wish. And one part stood out. If legality issues are caused by the wish's wealth, the devil promises to represent me legally to continue the lifespan of the wish. I remember coming up with this one when I figured he'd give me corrupt money. However, it applied here too. He rubbed his perfect jawline for a second, before agreeing, snapped his fingers, and was gone. I didn't know what to do, so I just waited until the dreaded court date. When the time came, I stood there, not sure of what to expect. However, right on time, in he came, dressed in a smart-as-ever suit, now accompanied with a briefcase. What happened next was above my head. He started simple, refuting evidence and breaking down inconsistencies in testimonies. And then he started hitting old laws. Laws that probably hadn't been called upon in centuries. By the end of it, what was supposed to be an open and shut case soon turned to a confused mess where they had no choice but to let me go and to only pay a large fine. 
I was back, and the fun would go on. I was soon back to my old ways, until I saw something which made me sick. My bank balance was no longer eight digits. It was now only six. This put me below the one million threshold. I know that sounds like a lot to most, but when some weeks of insane activities can cost you as much as 100k, one million is not a lot left at all. I checked over and over where it had all gone to see if the devil was playing games with me or if someone else had a hand in this. However, each time I checked, the accounts added up. I'd spent most of it. This wasn't good. I pulled half of it out for investments, started with safe stocks, seeing small margins of growth. However, at best, it was only making me a basic living wage. That wasn't good enough. I wanted more. Slowing down was a concept I could not even comprehend at this point. I took the other half and started widely investing. This went great. Until it didn't. That's something I learnt fast about investments. It's basically just high profile gambling. And I had no idea what I was doing. Soon I found myself with just the safe investment left. A small but tidy 500k. I took it out and hit up contacts to find out what to do with it. They all offered the same garble about small investments in promising startups and diversifying blah blah. That wasn't good enough. Only one person came through for me. He told me of an underground investment ring which deals with volatile stocks. However, these were the guys who made it work. These were the guys who would invest heavy on penny stocks and sell it when it went to two pence stocks. Doubling profit in one day? Sign me up. I had to pitch my case for why they should include me. However, when I showed them the money, they were interested. I was on the fast track to making it all back. 500k turned to 800k. 800k turned to 1.2 million. They were all taken back at how much I sank in. 100%. I didn't mess around. They only dipped their toes in. I was all in. Soon I was borrowing money from each of them to put more in. I figured the more I put in, the more I'd get out. Added up, I now had 1.5 million. This turned to 2 million easily. A few more and I'd be ready to have some fun again. Maybe I'd buy an island this time. Or maybe a resort. These thoughts came crashing down with the economy. At first, I put everything in a stock selling at four pence a share. Rather than rise slightly, it dipped to three pence. No worry, I thought. Maybe it would go up tomorrow. It didn't. Now two pence. My tidy two million was now one million. Okay, I thought. I can wait for it to go back to three pence and sell and get a little back. I didn't. At three pence, I waited for it to even out, seeing if I could break even. And on that weekend, the company announced liquidation. It was gone. It was all gone. I was left with nothing. However, I was even wrong about that. I wasn't left with nothing. I was in debt. In debt with some very nasty people. At first I reassured them that I had other investments, that I wasn't so stupid as to put all my eggs into one basket, something which they believed since only an idiot would do that. An idiot such as myself. I scrambled around my entire contacts list, begging for money, calling upon the good times to corral some nostalgia. Though they offered me something, it was a pittance compared to the amount I needed. And as promised, 
the threats started coming in. I was mailed a rather shifty looking package, which, after I threw at the wall, exploded. That was just a warning. While walking to the shops, I was jumped and beaten badly. Afterwards, I was told I had five days. This turned to four, then three, then two, and finally, one. I didn't leave the house, tried to barricade myself in, but they found a way. They were tenacious. I was soon strapped to a chair, a man with garden shears trimming off my fingers. This was it. At this point, I was accepting death. I was soon regretting all my decisions, wishing life would go back to how it was. A simpler time before all this madness. With this realisation, a certain someone popped into my head. Embarrassingly, in front of all these pretty hardcore people, I was soon screaming for the devil to help me. They all burst out cackling at my strange, desperate plea. Mid-laugh, everyone stopped. And there he was, smooth as ever, my saviour. I called upon the ultimate failsafe, the part of the wish I never knew I'd need, and almost forgot I had. If I decide the wish is not satisfactory, I can recall back to life to the point in which the deal is made for free. With this, he simply smiled, clicked his fingers, and everything went black. In what felt like a blink, I was back in my chair, looking at my dingy old apartment, covered in ketchup pentagrams. I was excited. I was back. Then I was shocked. I was back. Then I was solemn. I was back. Then I was sad. I was back. Then I was depressed. I was back. I scrambled for the ketchup and plastered my apartment in various demonic symbols I'd found online. I chanted out everything I could remember and more. The devil wasn't coming back. I realize. I never summoned him. He preyed on me in my time of weakness. He has given me a taste of the ultimate life of pleasure. A life I will never have. Making this life a life I don't want to live. Years of such intense happiness is something I can never forget. A ghost which would follow me everywhere I go in this mundane grey husk of a life. That's something I don't want to do. This is a warning. Never make a deal with the devil, no matter how prepared you are. The devil has won. He always wins.